Okay, welcome back to Space Arena, the Ultimate Python Turtle Graphics Game Tutorial Part 12. In this part, we're going to deal with player and enemy collisions. And this is going to be very similar to what we did in the last part, where we dealt with missile and enemy collisions. But it's going to work just slightly differently, and you'll, you'll see what happens here. So let's go ahead and find the part of the code where the collisions are registered, because we've already done that part. We did that a while back. So what we want to do here, I'm going to come all the way down, is we're looking at is instance sprite enemy and the, that that enemy is active. We did the missile thing last time. So what we want to do here is we'll go ahead and just do this. We're going to do sprite dot health minus equals. Let's say they both lose ten, and then player dot health minus equals ten. And let's go test that and see what happens. I'm kind of curious myself. Um, there's a red thing. Can you tell you what? I'm going to go ahead and change this, the size so we're not bouncing off the screen all the time here. It's really getting in my nerves as well. Um, so it was 300. So the so screen is 800 by 600. So we'll make it 700 by 500. So kind of so that way we're not chasing after stuff that's not on the screen. Okay. Okay. So did you see there? I collided. Now I've got less power, I've got less health, Okay, and you can see, now because my ship has 100 health and this now only has 20, we changed that a video or two ago, in the last video, so you can see I can just go ahead and ram, I can just go ahead and ram the enemies until I, now my health is at zero, and let's see what happens here, if we go into further, okay, so we never really dealt with, so you can see how it's doing the same thing that it did in the last video, where the uh, player's uh, health is now less than zero. So let's go ahead and deal with that just like we dealt with it in the enemy class. So we added this self and this reset method. So let's go ahead and see if I can find the player. Okay, so the player doesn't have an update method. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy the update method from the, and the reset method, I guess, from the, the enemy since we already did that. And so let's go ahead and pop that in there. Okay, so now with the player, we can't. Ha now this is the nice thing about using objects. I don't have to update this at all uh, because we're using self. Now the thing with the player is when the player resets, the player doesn't really have a state. The player state is always going to be active. But what we can do is we can say self dot x equals zero self.y equals zero, self.health equals self.maxhealth. So we basically reset everything back to the beginning. I'm gonna say self.heading equals 90 because that's the way we started it. Uh, let's, let's go ahead and do self.dx equals zero, self.dy equals zero, and we'll kind of figure out, see if that does what we need it to do. Um, did we do lives? Let's see if we did lives. Player, we did lives. So also do uh, self dot lives minus equals one. Now we'll have to deal later with if we have zero lives, but we'll, we're not gonna deal with that for now. Uh, deal with that later in the tutorial. So let's go ahead and test that. Now it's gonna take some time because okay, because the player has a lot of health, but let's go ahead and oops. Funny, it's hard to die when you want to. Um, let's see, make sure this works. Okay, and now the player went back to the center. It's not moving. It is. It has full health, and it is ready to fight the enemies again. Now we haven't dealt with power-ups, obviously. Now the other thing I wanted to do is, if you recall from the original game, when two uh, the enemy and the player collided there was a bouncing effect. So let's go ahead and put that in, because that, that's pretty darn cool. So I'm gonna put that in the sprite class, so I can have different sprites bounce against each other if, if need be. But I think we only use it with the player and enemies here. But let's go ahead and just do it. So I'm gonna go ahead and put that, it doesn't really matter where you put it to be honest, but I'm gonna go ahead and put it here before update. So I'm gonna say def, we'll call it bounce, self and other. 
Okay, so it might be the player and enemy. It could be enemy and player. It could be enemy and enemy. We could have the enemies bouncing against each other if we wanted to, too. So watch what I do. Actually, to explain the physics of it, it's kind of interesting. One of my students, Sarah, thank you very much, Sarah, she actually figured this out uh, a few months ago in class, and uh, I'm very grateful for that. She figured out how this works. So basically what happens is if you want two objects to bounce like somewhat realistically, is you need to exchange their dx and dy values. Okay, so think about that. So if two objects are heading towards each other and they, they hit each other and you have a perfectly elastic collision, they will bounce back in the other direction. So they basically borrow the momentum of the other person and the momentum of A is transferred to B, the momentum of B is transferred to A. So here's how I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna do temp underscore dx equals self dot dx. I'm gonna do temp underscore dy equals self dot dy. And then I'm gonna do self dot dx equals other dot dx. Self dot dy equals other dot dy. And I'm gonna do other dot dx equals temp underscore dx. Don't screw up the underscores. And other dot dy equals temp underscore dy. Now, those of you who've done a lot of Python will, will recognize the fact that there is an easier way to do this in Python, but I'm going to write it out like this. So in case you're coming from another language, it makes a little bit more sense what we're doing. So, so temp dx equals self. So basically, we're holding the value of self's dx and dy because we're about to change it here to the other's dx and dy. And then the other's dx and dy takes on the temp values, which was the original dx and dy. So then down here, I actually have to call that my main game loop. So if there is a collision, and I can put it at the end, doesn't matter. I'm going to say player.bounce with the sprites. So the player is going to bounce. Let's test that out. This starts giving me like a cool effect. Oh my gosh, that's so cool. Okay, you see how they're bouncing now. Oops. Can you see how it's just very subtle? You know, if there's if there's a very little difference in speed, there's just a little bit of a bounce. Do you see that? Okay, and and now we've got okay, we still got our weapons working. Okay, that got now see how that that one's flying around because we hit it really hard. But yeah, so that that is the bounce effect. Okay, which is very very cool. It gives it a bit more fun physics-y type type feel. So so we created a bounce method. And again, it just basically it exchanges the dx and dy values, and that that was it. And again, thank you to Sarah for figuring that out for me. Uh, yeah, so I think that's about. It. I think you can go back and, and watch that again if you need to. But it's not that uh, it's not that crazy. It's not that difficult. Um, but you also see how now the player has a way of dying. It loses lives. It goes back to the center. So we're starting to put into place all those little. Game, game elements that make a game into a game other than just a kind of fun demo. Okay, stay tuned for more.